what's good y'all welcome back today you already know we're reacting to part four of the day part four and five i forgot i'm doing a double today because i can't just leave y'all hanging throughout the weekend without the last part uh i'm gonna address a couple things i have seen some comments don't get your feelings hurt talking crazy in my comments to my peoples i don't play that um two so i had to delete some comments because people was talking wild two michael jordan has a team Bubba Wallace 2021. It's gonna be crazy. I mean, I'm hella excited for that. Uh, super ready. I'm gonna be buying NASCAR Heat 5 as well, the game on my PC. So if any of y'all play NASCAR Heat 5, let me know down in my Discord and I'll figure out how to fucking set up games and shit. I don't know when I'm gonna buy the game, but I plan on buying it soon. Um, so yeah, if y'all wanna play, join the Discord and we'll do that. But original video link will be down in the description. Let's get into the video. Michael Waltrip drove to the winner's circle to celebrate victory in the 2001 Daytona 500. How could he have known that the seminal moment of his career would be forever shrouded in tragedy? Make sure to shut it up somewhere. Homie's on cloud nine after this win. It was amazing. People that didn't know me a month before, now we're all standing in victory lane celebrating winning the greatest race in the world. The greatest race in the world. Everything was just was so cool. Now everybody knows who Mans is. Probably 20, 30 minutes. We kept watching on the camera and this looked bad. And, and you can tell by the people around the, the, the car, even though it was in a long shot. Then the ambulance came up, and then Dale was taken out and placed in the ambulance. And then we followed, watched the ambulance going to the hospital. And the ambulance was traveling virtually at walking pace, which meant either a broken back or death. Oh, wow. That's what that means. Michael Waltrip finally gets his first win after all these tries. Any reaction? While Earnhardt's driver Michael Waltrip celebrates, Dale Earnhardt rides the back of an ambulance. I have goosebumps, guys. Medical like, I'm so, like, scared to the watch the rest of this. The thing you want to do is overstate the drama of the situation. And yet, you don't want to understate the possibility that, that things could go really bad. I was in Victory Lane and everybody obviously, it was a lot of celebration, a lot of happy people and everybody seems to be just overly elated and Michael's got the trophies and Michael's being Michael. What was begin beginning to be more and more odd is no Earnhardt was there. And I remember thinking, where's Dale? I mean, how come he's not here yet? And Dale Jr., how come he's not here? I, I, I'm sure they're coming, right? John Graham, who is the uh, president of the racetrack, came over and he said, hey, who's going to accept the owner's trophy? And I said, well, Dale will be here any minute. Just Dale or Therese or one of these, somebody will take the trophy. And he says, no, Dale, says, Dale's, they're taking Dale over to the hospital. So for the owner's trophy, John basically did the victory lane interview with me, and then he had me stand in the pictures. As soon as we got done with that first photo, I looked over, and Ken Schrader walked into victory lane. Mikey, he just won Daytona 500. What a big deal. It's a big ass deal. That was such an important uh, moment for him. I love Mikey like a brother, and I wanted to tell him. Bro, what he's choking up, and he I can feel it. He made fun of me all the time, you know, about, about not winning. And uh, finally, there's somebody I know coming to say congratulations. I saw him, and I said, Can you believe it, Schrader? I won the Daytona 500. And, uh, he just grabbed me and said, it's not good. And I was like, well, it's not really that bad that I won the Daytona 500, is it? I just told Mikey that, uh, you know, that I was awful happy for him and stuff. But, no, listen, Mike, we got a, we got a, we got a big problem here. I'm extremely Bro. worried about Dale. 
you can see his facial expression drop. I remember him looking at me, you know, and it's just like, like it didn't register because, you know. But he's trying he so hard to just to like act normal, like everything's cool. And so that pretty much told me that, um, you know, the celebration was over. You know, what I thought was the greatest day ever was heading in a direction that would make it the, the worst day ever. By then, I'm, I don't know what to do. I'm wanting to go to Victory Circle, but I don't know if I should. And we're on a quick off. Uh, the, the race went long because of the red flag, and we were at the top of the hour, and so we couldn't stay and give a, a report about any, nobody knew anything. They were, everybody was real hush-hush about it, and nobody was telling us anything, so we had to go off the air. Well, thanks, John. We all knew Michael Waltrip had a fast car here in Speed Weeks. I tried to get both Larry and Darrell to concentrate on the win, on victory lane, on analyzing the race and what had happened, while I tried to piece together all the information we had so that we didn't say the wrong thing, but we also didn't go away leaving people to think that everything was all right. We're jubilant for the Waltrips, and our prayers and are with that's the exactly what family. they should have been. John? Well, I was going to go to Victory Circle, but my friend Andy uh, Kesposito, he's a deputy sheriff, he was going to take me down through the crowd to get to Victory Circle. So when I, when I take off the headset and I turn around, he's standing at the top of the stairs shaking his head. And uh, <clears throat> Big Andy's wife works, she worked at the Halifax Hospital in the emergency room. She had called him and told him to get DW and get down here. Uh, the because One survive. road led to victory lane. The other carried a life in the balance. The sport's biggest I'm not day talking, had become a cacophony of celebration and but sorrow. Like, honestly, I really don't know what to say. I couldn't, I, I didn't know what to do. I don't even, I, you know, even to this day, I don't know why I went to the hospital. I really don't. Uh, family, NASCAR, you know, although everybody that, that needed to be there was there. We're, in, we're just in the emergency room. We're, we're inside, and it's not a waiting room outside. We are, like, inside. We're not in front of Dale. They got Dale screened off and everything, so... Um, but we just know it's not pretty. I can't remember everyone that was in the room, but whoever came in, I think it was a doctor, came in and said, we lost Dale. I have his son standing next to me. There's nobody in this room. So I take care of him. And we just all sit there and uh, not knowing what to expect next and uh, I remember some of us just had our heads down and uh, it's just it was a bad day. The best day they could have possibly had turns I go into, into the, the worst day so far. Where fast. all the team members are at. And I remember just looking at all of their faces and just this junk. So, so that's kind of where we all were. No skips, no cuts. We're going right to part five. I thought about Michael when I left the hospital. I thought, oh my gosh, wonder where, wonder what he, wonder if he knows, wonder what he's, you know, wonder what he's doing. 
Buffy was from the little I've seen about Dale yeah, Earnhardt from this little series I'm um, doing. Talking this to man NASCAR is a fucking talking legend. To, um, the family, and so she was, she was doing a job, an admirable job of <laughs> making sure none of that got to me. Then we got in the van together, and it was the first time I'd been alone with her, and she said, it's Dale's dead. How do you take that news? I started wondering how I was supposed to feel at that moment, and I haven't stopped wondering since. One well, NASCAR officials, who I knew knew what the deal was, I asked them when people were starting to leave and stuff, and I said, hey, is it official? Well, we ain't got an official word, and I, <laughs> I never cuss anybody, but I said, listen, you blankly blank. <laughs> Tell me what the deal is. I was just down there, and so then they told me. They had to tell Even them. before the announcement, I believe that it started to filter that. through that it was a, it was a possibility. At that point, I remember Mike Helton coming into the media center and standing up there at that podium and saying those words that have now, that are now etched in our brains forever. This is undoubtedly one of the toughest announcements that I've ever personally had to make. Uh, but after the accident and turn four at the end of the Daytona 500, uh, We've lost Dale Earnhardt. I'm not going to cry. Those were, those words were impossible. I remember walking out in the garage and crew guys and people that had been in the sport forever. Bro, it just sucks because it was sobbing. the very end of the race. It was the, the very end. Scene because right there. People were basically walking around in a daze. It couldn't happen to him. You know, it had to be close to two hours after the race when we finally made it to the, to the motor home and, and uh, I think I asked him, I said, you want me to come over? You want to come over here? And he said, no, I just want to be alone. Cause that was hard for him. Because Dale had, you know, done that win meant so much. So much. And to have it, to, and to not, to not be able to, to share have that him there. With Dale, like bro, gave him a chance. And to first win of his career, Daytona. First win of his, his career, his dude. Brian. He put him in that position for fucking greatness. And uh, Michael said, this is, this is supposed to be my, the greatest day of my life, and it's my worst. And all I could say through being choked up, and all I said is, Dale knew. Dale knew you won that race. That's all you can say. So. All night, Sunday night, you know, I never slept, you know, trying to figure out how this could happen, why it happened. What was next? Uh, you know, we lost what I would call our franchise of RCR. I lost a very, very close friend that hurt worse than anything. And uh, lost my hunting buddy. This evening, the death of NASCAR legend and giant Dale Earnhardt at 49. He said it fucking he right. NASCAR legend. Sustained in a crash on the last lap of the Daytona 500 at the Daytona International Speedway. I remember pulling into DEI after we got Dale home and just seeing the hundreds and hundreds of people that were there and the candles and the We Miss You's and all of their tributes. I remember looking at me and saying, if it ever happens to me, 
you better get a raise. We ask all the employees, if you want to go home and be with your families, go. And I can't recall one person leaving. Their way of overcoming it was to start worrying about Rockingham. I'd like to ask you to do something. I'd like to ask you to take the hand by the person beside you. Lord, our, our hearts are hurting. We've lost a great Look friend. Look at how many people are there. And it all seems Look so at unfair. the crowd. People ask us, how can we go out and race today? We can do that, first of all, because we know that's what Dale would want us to do. And second of all, because, Lord, we know without a doubt that he is dwelling in your house and will forevermore. Amen. Amen. One week after a sport's darkest hour, DEI driver Steve Park rose to the moment. Here they're going to come to the line. It's going to be a photo finish. Park has the run off the high side. He clears the body. And Steve Park scores the second straight win for Earnhardt Incorporated. Boy, and that team, they needed that. Look at the hype. Look at the hype. I brought tears in my eyes. It's crazy how much one person can impact so many lives. Two weeks later, Richard Childress, rookie Kevin Harvick, Dale's crew, and a renumbered three car delivered their eulogy. And Kevin Harvick is going super right now. What does he have? Nine wins? Oh, that's the photo. That's a photo finish with the big three. When NASCAR returned to Daytona, a son carried a message to his father. And perhaps a father carried his son. Here they come. Turn Six to first, you hear that? I just was so happy I could push him home. Made the night complete, made it perfect. And then to be able Bro, to Bro, this is such a great and way and to end over this. Over 100,000 people screaming. It was amazing. I, I remember thinking, I'm better now. It's all, it'll, it'll be fine now. You know, we. this is redemption. If you watch how each one of those wins were, it was almost uh, like it was meant to be. It was meant that to because it was. And uh, know how proud Dale, Dale was watching over of every one of us, calling the big shots from up top. That was a beautiful way to end this series, y'all. I did my best to hold my tears in and I held back most of them. I let I let a little bit of I let a little bit of tear out. I ain't even going to lie. But because of him, NASCAR changed completely. And I see why you guys have so much love for Dale. I respect this man. His legacy will forever live on. Long live the number 3 and I hope y'all enjoyed the reaction. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next video. I love y'all. Peace. They wanna fall. Back when I was down bad, I was stuck in the mud. Now nigga didn't clean up Louis V on the so so.